farmers are worried about stink a stink bug invasion. The invasive species is threatening Lock crops. Lock your doors and close your windows. And stink bugs are back. They're back, they're... those pesky stink bugs. Back in 2010, when we experienced the first year of significant agricultural injury throughout the Mid-Atlantic, we knew not a lot about the biology, ecology, and behavior. And there was only one study that had ever been conducted looking at insecticides against brown marmorated stink bug. And so what that meant also was that there were no management recommendations for brown marmorated stink bugs. So growers were essentially using materials that may not have been effective. And in fact, we had growers that were going out and spraying some insecticides where Literally, we would see carpets of seemingly dead brown marmorated stink bugs on the ground beneath their orchard trees. However, when we would go back 24, 48 hours later, those bugs were recovering and climbing back up in the trees. This is referred to as knockdown and recovery. And so what it told us is that we needed a concerted effort in terms of identifying those insecticides that truly did kill brown marmorated stink bugs. And so through coordinated efforts with Greg Krawcheck at Penn State, Tom Kuhar at Virginia Tech, and our lab here at the USDA, we conducted a series of insecticide trials to determine what are the most effective insecticides that they could use in specialty crops. And so in 2011, certainly that was the first line of defense that we had. And we continue to use insecticides to manage this insect. But of course, what we want to do is to develop long-term solutions that will allow us to reduce the use of insecticides and create as sustainable as possible management programs. One of the challenges with brown marmorated is not necessarily resistance to insecticides, it's the sheer population numbers that the bugs can just keep on coming from outside of the field. Bugs may not pick up a lethal dose and may go right back to business, damaging the plant, reproducing. So you need an insecticide with a long residual. The problem is that brown marmorated stink bug is basically a landscape level pest. It can develop, survive everywhere outside of the area that we're trying to control. And with adults' ability to fly very long distances, it's very easy for them to come to the orchard after the insecticide was already applied. And all our research in the last three years suggests that residual activity of insecticides on adult stink bug is very minimal. Residual activity on NIMS is much stronger. Adults basically can come and go if they don't like the area that was treated. One of the issues that we're dealing with is the frequency of application. Brown marmorated stink bug, because of its continuous movement from the outside, might require in certain situation quite frequent applications in order to prevent damage. It's not about killing the stink bug, it's about preventing the damage, because we will never kill all the stink bugs that are out there. The invasion of the brown marmorated stink bug has significantly disrupted our IPM programming. Prior to brown marmorated stink bug, we were doing a very effective job at managing the other key pests of tree fruit with relatively soft chemistries. Um, we were reducing number of inputs and, and program costs. Brown marmorated stink bug has necessitated that growers use more aggressive chemistries and more frequently. What we're recommending to tree fruit growers to manage brown marmorated stink bug is the use of alternate row middle spray applications throughout the growing season. That tends to maintain fresher residues which are more efficacious than our applications at 14 day intervals. And what I mean by alternate row middle spray applications are applications to half of each row twice as frequently within an IPM framework. Our recommendations are to hold the products that are known to be most disruptive to the natural enemies of secondary pests until later in the season. That is to say, not going in too early with those uh, heavy hammers and potentially causing secondary pest outbreaks unnecessarily. So the risk in both orchards and in vegetable crop systems are when you use these insecticides that are effective against brown marmorated stink bugs, you're going to be killing natural enemies and you may have a resurgence of secondary pests. In vegetable crops, one example is green peach aphid. That's an insect that, that typically is not a pest of vegetable crops, 
When you start spraying pyrethroids to control brown marmorated stink bug, all of a sudden you've got an aphid problem. That aphid is resistant to pyrethroids. The pyrethroid kills all its natural enemies and you end up with a serious aphid problem. We've seen it time and time again. I've spent probably the past 30 years working with IPM, trying to get away from the harsher chemicals. What I don't want to go back to is what my father was doing. Um, when you knew that insect was there, you didn't know much about it, you didn't know when it was there. So you just sprayed, and you sprayed more, and you sprayed more. And we don't want to go back to that. Uh, it doesn't make any sense. It's bad for us, it's bad for the environment, costs a lot. For two consecutive seasons, we were involved in a collaborative effort looking at the distribution of brown marmorated stink bug feeding injury in late season apple varieties at harvest. And so we collected fruit from different uh, orchard canopy zones, and we also collected fruit from trees in the border rows, from the interior of the block, and from rows intermediate between those two zones. And what we found was that, in general, the injury tended to be highest in fruit at the top of the canopy in trees in the rows bordering woodlands. One strategy that growers might take is to more aggressively manage brown marmorated stink bug in those border rows. Pesticides are effective, but pesticides are not the solution for this problem. And growers know this, we know this, we just hope that pesticides are buying us some time until we have some approach that will help us utilize not only pesticides, but biological control, behavioral methods, cultural methods, and develop this as a one systematic approach. We're certified organic and we grow a whole mixture of vegetables, herbs, cut flowers, and a little bit of small fruit. The most effective thing that we've practiced here has been actually covering some of our more lucrative crops with physical barriers. We simply put a floating row cover over the top and we're able to protect the crop during the worst period in which the, the BMSB would be trying to feed on it. So in 2010, we were so scared of this pest that we actually erected full um, hoops that were field size cages over the tomatoes because that's such a high value crop for us, the heirloom tomatoes particularly. But we found that there's a limitation to the size that you can use in covering. The wind becomes a problem. The fabric, for instance, um, isn't strong enough to hold up to that size. So we're only able to use that for the smaller beds. We did look at trap crop. We used sunflower as a barrier around some of our key cash crops that are really decimated by the stink bug. And we found that trap cropping can be quite effective at attracting the stink bugs and they use the, the sunflower as a resource. Both the nymphs and the adults feed on it. However, if we don't have a means of then killing the brown marmorated stink bug when it's in the trap crop, it does eventually move and it colonizes the cash crops. Really, at this point in time, we're, we're holding out for a more effective pheromone-based trap that will attract the brown marmorated so that we could use that in conjunction with some sort of trap cropping system. 